be here with us as we gather together to hear with joy the message brought by the angels of Jesus' birth. Enable us to journey in heart and mind to Bethlehem, to reflect on the nativity of our Saviour and to bow in adoration before God incarnate on earth. May you speak to us through song, through drama, through speech, and through listening to your holy word. And as we come to worship, we lift up your world in prayer. We pray for peace on earth, for fellowship among those created in the image of God, for care for the poor and needy, for the unity of the church, and for ourselves. Amen. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. I have been asked, tasked, to register a multitude of people in this little town. I've been working dawn till dusk on behalf of the emperor, and I have been meticulous in making sure there is not one single mistake. I mean, look, look at all these forms. I have been making sure that everybody who is here in Bethlehem has registered. Oh, excuse me, just checking you've registered. You have registered. A form filled in, a form you're going to fill in. Right. I've seen not bother to register at all. Now it's really important that you go and collect a form and give it to me by the end of the day. Now, please, thank you. You know, I met the loveliest couple the other day, Mary and Joseph. Name of mother, Mary. Name of child, Jesus. Name of father, I am. I looked at the man and asked him his real name. Joseph, he replied. So I asked him, why didn't you just put the name Joseph instead of writing I am? Oh, I'm not the father, he said. And that was it, end of the conversation. I am. I am? I am, as in the almighty God. I don't think so. I am? You know what? I'm going to take my papers and come back tomorrow. I am? No. I am? About that time, Emperor Augustus gave orders for the names of all the people to be listed in record books. Everyone had to go to their own hometown to be listed. So Joseph had to leave Nazareth in Galilee and go to Bethlehem in Judea. Long ago, Bethlehem had been King David's hometown and Joseph went there because he was from David's family. Mary was engaged to Joseph and traveled with him to Bethlehem. She was soon going to have a baby and while they were there, she gave birth to her firstborn son. She dressed him in baby clothes and laid him on a bed of hay because there was no room for them in the inn.
There were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of God shone around them. And they were terrified, but the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You have found a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that's happened, which the Lord has told us about. I've just looked out of the window, and they've put him in the stable. Did you know that? Yes, you've told me. Sleeping with the animals, disgusting. Don't you think it's disgusting? Yes, dear, disgusting. Well, I think it's appalling. Don't you think it's appalling? Yes, dear, appalling. Well, I think it's shocking. Don't you think it's shocking? Yes, dear, it's shocking, appalling, disgusting, flabbergasting, okay? I never said flabbergasting. Nobody ever says flabbergasting these days. None of my friends say it. I don't hear it in conversations or read it written down. Flabbergasted, to surprise greatly, to be astonished, as I'm greatly surprised we didn't check TripAdvisor before we booked. I'm astonished that our hotel room with a view is one of a smelly, noisy stable. I can see some shepherds down there now. Perhaps you ought to check it out. No, thank you. It's very noisy over in the stable. Why not have a look? No, thank you. Come on, just come and have a look. It's very bright over in the stable. Why not have a look? No, thank you. Well, this could be going on all night. I think one of the shepherds is crying. Perhaps he's lost a sheep. One of them is kneeling down with his head on the ground. Perhaps he's lost a coin. One of them is dancing. Perhaps he's found the coin. They've seen something. What have they seen? They're all kneeling down, all crying now. They and are they're crying. All, they're all peering into the stable. Yeah, they are crying and kneeling and laughing and... and... And I am flabbergasted. <laughs>
So the shepherds hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Lads, lads, where have they gone? Lads, oh, I, I think they've gone. They all just suddenly shot out of that stable. I was just warming my hands by the fiery flames when in the blink of an eye, the sky was on fire. And after we found him, the baby Jesus, of course, just like the angels said, I know, the angels. Don't be afraid, that's what they said. Don't be afraid, I've been hiding in the shadows my whole life. But now, I am really sorry if the lads woke you up with all their bawling and shouting and such like. But no, I'm not sorry they woke you up. Why should you miss out? Why should you stay asleep when the whole world's changed forever? When I know that God is with us and God is for us, every single one of us. I've never quite known peace like tonight. Not that deep down peace that no wolf can rob you of, that no darkness can steal. I've never known a joy like this. A joy that can make you want to sing and to shout, and I know it sounds too good to be true, and like some kind of story. But I'll tell you the truth. It is a story. It's my story. And it will always be my story. And who knows, thousands of years from now, in a far off country, on a dark winter's night, Somebody could be telling my story. Now I know that does seem hard to believe, but after tonight, anything is possible because the world is changing. Jesus has changed my world. But anyway, now that I've got my breath back, um, lads, lads, wait for me. Uh, where are you, lads? May I speak in the name of God. I am the hope of the world. Well, I'm flabbergasted. Uh, I'm flabbergasted by the amount of talking that goes on in the Christmas story. Um, if you think about it, when Mary first meets Gabriel and his, she's expecting a baby, what does she go and do? She immediately rushes off and goes and talks to her cousin Elizabeth. Girls, whether you're 11, 12, right the way through to being a little bit older girl in your 90s, uh, who do you talk to at those big, big moments? And then uh, Joseph. Uh, we heard the short reading of Joseph hearing that his fiance is expecting a baby. He thinks about divorcing her. Uh, and then if you remember the story, there's a dream. And as a result of that dream, he changes his mind. I am sure between hearing about Mary's pregnancy and the dream and thereafter, he'd have been chatting to one or two of his building and joinery mates. Fellas, who do you talk to at those big moments? Where do you go to? We hear that phrase, don't we? The strong, silent type. 
Well, they're just pains in the neck because they never talk and they need to talk. But think about who you go and talk to and the qualities of listening. What makes a good listener? I am sure that Mary and Joseph talk to each other and they listened hard to each other and really carefully about what was happening in their lives. These big, big moments. Families, couples, companions, I do hope you talk to each other and listen carefully to each other. Do you listen well as your loved one talks to you? We've got shepherds. Well, I'm sure there was tons of banter on the hillside, mocking and joking and teasing. And then did you hear the angels appeared and they listened really carefully to what the angels were saying. And then they hot-footed down the hillside to see what they'd been told. And then that lovely little sketch just then, they cried, they wept, they laughed, they danced. And I'm sure they talked and talked and talked into the wee small hours of the night. And of course, that manger was occupied by perhaps the greatest of all talkers, but also the greatest of all listeners. Jesus, the Christ, the I am, the one who always listens, the hope of the world. How's your hope for yourself, for your loved ones, for those you talk with and those you listen to, and for creation? All of us have a part to play, to talk and to listen, and to transform creation. It's been a hard road these past months. It's not ending. We need to be talkers and listeners and prayers to the one who always listens to us. Jesus, the hope of the world. Talk well, listen well, pray and worship well. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, bringer of light and hope and love to the world, we give thanks for our school community. We give thanks that your light and hope and love unites us in our learning and living together. We thank you that we are able to gather here this night in York Minster and tell your story. We pray for those who need our prayers this day. May we as a school community live your story and reflect your light, hope and love. Light of the world, hear us as we pray. Lord Jesus, bringer of hope to the vulnerable, the lonely and the struggling. We pray for those in need of your care and compassion. Bring hope to those who feel they are living in darkness. And may we bring strength to the weary and joy to the downhearted and peace to those who are restless. Light of the world, hear us as we pray. Lord Jesus, bringer of hope to young people and families. 
We pray for families in difficulty, hardship and poverty, and for families and relationships that are breaking down. We pray for families who have no home, for those who sleep on the streets, and all who have lost everything through violence or disaster. May we bring a helping hand of comfort and generosity. Light of the world, hear us as we pray. Lord Jesus, bringer of hope to all who help and guide young people in school and at home and in the wider community. We pray that you would be with those who support, teach and care for young people. Strengthen and enlighten them in their service, that they may know your blessing upon them, especially in difficult times. Light of the world, hear us as we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His royal power will continue to grow. His kingdom will always be at peace. He will rule as King David's successor, basing his power on right and justice from now until the end of time. The Lord Almighty is determined to do all this. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you, those you love and those for whom you pray. Today, and always. Amen.